This, believe it or not, is a member of our modern Navy, a seafaring man afloat on an atmospheric ocean. He belongs to a very special group known as the Shooting Stars. They fly through the air with the greatest of ease, these daring young men of the U.S. Navy Parachute Exhibition Team, a group of expert jumpers whose mission is to travel the length and breadth of this country and the neighboring foreign countries. Demonstrating free fall techniques to stimulate interest in the Navy in general and in naval aviation in particular. Since the group was first organized in 1961, the shooting stars have thrilled capacity crowds at hundreds of air shows, performing before millions of spectators. But the members of the team are not professional skydivers. All are naval parachutists, volunteers whose past work has pioneered in the research and development of pilot safety and survival equipment. Projects such as ejections from jet aircraft and the design of parachute equipment for the astronauts are part of their contribution to increased safety in aviation. The thrills of parachuting appeal to officers and enlisted men alike, and men from all ratings make up the membership of the team. Prospective shooting stars, who must have considerable prior experience in parachute jumping, apply for the team through regular channels. Making it, however, is not quite so simple. For the stars want only the best. When a man's life may depend upon the skill, good judgment, and quick thinking of his buddies, he makes certain they measure up to his own high standards. In addition, the members of the team are constantly in the public eye. They must be personable men in all respects. And these are qualities that the team members like to assess for themselves. Once he has been given the stamp of approval by the officers and men, the newcomer is eligible to begin winter training with the team at their headquarters, the Naval Air Station at Pensacola, Florida. Here, he begins a rigorous period of conditioning on the ground, a refresher course that includes such basic training as physical exercise. instruction in safety procedures, landing techniques, parachute handling, and possible malfunctions. And packing the chutes. Because of the highly specialized nature of their work, the team members always attend to this task themselves. Ground training is followed by a series of practice jumps from lower altitudes, during which the men perfect their opening and landing techniques. Free falling, or skydiving, as it is better known in civilian circles, is of little concern in this phase of the team's preseason preparation. The 
parachutes used by the team are specially designed to provide forward speed and maneuverability. Certain panels at the rear of the chute have been removed and control lines from each side of the cutaway area permit the jumper to steer his canopy in any desired direction. Exhibition jumping demands considerable accuracy in landing. Large crowds are usually present, and the jumper, like the freeway driver, must stay in the proper lane to avoid accidents. The stand-up landing is not prescribed for beginners, but the experienced jumper can safely execute this crowd-pleasing maneuver. On completion of this basic period, the shooting stars move upstairs into the comparatively rarefied atmosphere some two and one half miles above the earth. Even though every man on the team is an experienced hand, including the newcomers, exhibition jumping makes special demands that require special training. Expert instructors, men with many hundreds of jumps to their credit, help the beginners to learn the team's spectacular routines. The clumsy motion of the body, an arm or leg raised or lowered at the wrong time, can send the jumper out of control. However, like any good pilot, he can usually maneuver his human flying machine back into a normal and stable position. Most important in this phase of the jumper's training is to become adept at working with the other members of the team. So adept, in fact, that he can pass a baton back and forth with a teammate while plummeting downward at 120 miles per hour. target is laid out on the ground as a naming point for the jumpers. And as they drift down, a colored smoke bomb is set off to orient them on the direction and the relative velocity of the surface wind. The jumpers always land facing the wind, a maneuver that minimizes their horizontal speed on impact. Occasionally, the men depart from the strict regimen of practicing their show routines. They've fallen into the habit of calling these fun jumps. For obvious reasons.
the emphasis is always on perfecting their technique in free fall and on landing. The instruction session usually continues on the ground, where every detail of the jump is hashed and rehashed. But life on the team is not confined solely to jumping out of aircraft and thrilling the crowds. Each man has collateral duties. He must maintain his professional Navy status during his tour with the shooting stars. He may fly a desk, or rig parachutes, or sweep the decks. Or repair the aircraft. And there is always the regular inspection under the sharp eyes of the skipper. During their road season, which normally runs from March through November, the stars become the original traveling salesmen the skywings. Often they are on the road for weeks at a time as they hop from air show to air show. from one hotel or barracks to the next. And very often, the only rest a man can get is at a point somewhere between the earth and the sky, falling gracefully at a speed somewhat faster than that of an express train. of the entire operation is the show performance. On such occasions, tens of thousands of eager spectators are given an opportunity to see what has happened to the parachute since that long ago day in 1617, when an Italian named Faust Veranzio made the first recorded jump from a tower in Venice using a square wooden framework covered with canvas as a chute. The informal atmosphere so characteristic of the training days is noticeably absent during the team's public performances. But the 
careful precautions are very much in evidence. Although the stars have a saying, if your chute doesn't open, take it back and get another one, they still check every strap, snap, and buckle before taking off. The formations the team will demonstrate have been so thoroughly rehearsed that only a few reminders are necessary in the pre-show briefing. On the ground is in the air. It is the jump master who gives the orders. Since the performance will take place at more than 12,500 feet altitude, the jumpers fix cans to their feet containing a mixture that will produce colored smoke, thus making it easier for the spectators to follow them with the naked eye as they free fall through space. team's information officer keeps the crowd informed as their sky train transport heads for the wild blue yonder. And throws in some interesting statistics. In 1962, for example, the shooting stars spent a total of nearly 26 hours free falling without open parachutes. Enough mileage to cover approximately the distance between the cities of Los Angeles and New York. At 2,500 feet, the aircraft passes directly over the target zone below. And the jump master drops a colored streamer. The distance the streamer drifts to leeward of the target will enable him to compute the point at which the jumpers should exit the aircraft. Armed with this information, the jump master directs the plane commander as he flies the aircraft to the required altitude and position. It's a tricky job, rather like finding the exact spot on the surface of a trackless sea where the fish were biting yesterday. On reaching an altitude of about 12,500 feet, the stars make ready for their first pass over the jump zone. Five seconds before the aircraft reaches the exit point, the jump master gives the standby signal. When the jumpers step out of the aircraft, they meet the full force of a hurricane wind created by the churning propellers and the plane's forward speed. But seconds later, they are in a world of utter silence, no longer buffeted by the wind, not even conscious of the sensation of falling. The free-falling jumper feels like a man floating on a cushion of air, alone in the vastness of the sky, until a teammate comes drifting in to join him for one of the shooting star's routines. His stopwatch and altimeter inform him that he has been in free fall for 60 seconds, that his altitude is about 2,500 feet, and that it is now time to pull his ripcord. Meanwhile, the sky train is circling, 
approaching the exit point on his second pass. Proper body positions, a parachutist can do almost anything a fighter aircraft can do, except, of course, to go up. In the basic stable spread position, he falls face down at a comfortable 120 miles per hour. The French developed the frog position a relaxed version of the stable spread that results in a slightly faster fall. While in maximum track, he can travel approximately one foot horizontally for every vertical foot he falls. The delta position enables the speed-conscious parachutist to hurtle earthward at up to 185 miles per hour. The shooting stars use all these basic positions and others in their show routines. practice of working together as a team really pay off. But for the men of the shooting stars, the performance is not quite over when they hit the ground.
individual recognition, as Samuel Johnson once said, is like gold and diamonds in that it owes its value to scarcity. tour, however, the members of the team strike a bonanza at every stopping place. But the plaudits of the crowd, heartwarming as they are, can only be earthbound music to a shooting star who tomorrow, perhaps half a continent away, will be hearing the melody of the heavens as he spreads his wings in a strange and distant sky.